when we are working in the workshop, it's super important that we have some sort of at least basic strategy of how we're going to go about cutting out the parts for our project. Now, if you're somebody that only your project is only like kind of like one part, one big part, that this isn't going to apply as much to you. But if we have a project that involves multiple parts, this definitely definitely applies very heavily to you. So just in terms of um, cutting strategy like this, so this relates to everybody just in terms of most of us, we're going to start with cutting something on the table saw. We're usually going to cut a rectangle out of a bigger rectangle. So our big, big sheets of plywood, they come 48 inches by 96 inches. And we're going to cut those down. We're going to make big rectangle and a smaller rectangle. And we most likely are going to use a table saw for that. Most of us for sure are going to do that. And one reason why we like to use a table saw is it just gives us a nice straight cut, especially when we do a rip cut. Just really nice, easy, quick way to get nice straight cuts. So we definitely want to do rip cuts on the table saw. And then we're probably going to end up doing some cross cuts as well. And that might involve us doing that with um, using the miter gauge on the table saw. Otherwise, we might use, like, for example, we might use the miter, miter saw itself for some of those cross type cuts. So then we take those big rectangles, make them into small rectangles, and then maybe you got to cut out some other shapes out of those things. Maybe you're cutting a circle out of them, you got to drill some holes, and then it's kind of like, again, we start with table saw, we work our way down to like the miter saw, and then we got scroll saw, jigsaw, maybe if we got some curvy shape kind of stuff, and then drill press if we got to drill holes, and so on. So some other things to consider is when we're cutting with this table saw, that blade is an eighth inch thick. If I remember correctly, the miter saw is the same, and then these blades have thickness as well. And then... What I'm going to try and do for you is I'm going to have prepared for you 12 inch by 36 inch kind of like planks and then also 12 inch by 60 inch planks. That's kind of my plan to have those provided for you. Um, probably mostly 12 by 36 so you can play with those and just in terms of it'd be easier for you to manage not a huge type board. Before we even step foot in the workshop wanting to start cutting some wood is we should have some sort of strategy. If we go in without a strategy that can cause mistakes and cause us to waste time, it can cause us to waste other people's time as well. So I want to give you a scenario here of a bad cutting strategy. So imagine this is the person's project. We're making a box, has six sides, so we get six pieces. That's what the two represents, two of these, two of those, two of those. So 12 inch by 10 inch, two of those, 11 by 10 inch, two of those, seven by six inch. Imagine what they did is basically for every single piece, they went and they found a piece of wood somewhere on the shelf, and then they cut each piece individually, put their name on it, and so on, whatever. Now, yes, this is kind of a common scenario that I kind of see what people do, especially if they, they go on without a strategy. So let's take a look at, well, how long would that take? So here's kind of the scenario. They're building one piece at a time. They find their uh, a piece of wood that's big enough. They move the fence on the table side of 12 inches. Then they cut that 12 inches. And then now they move the fence again, and then they cut the 10 inches. And now they have one of these 12 by 10s done. Notice that was five steps alone. And now here's another problem with this is what I see sometimes people when they're doing this is they grab like a huge board, like a big board that they're just going to cut a little square out of. It doesn't make sense to grab such a big board to then mess up and just cut one small chunk out of. Anyway, so continuing on. So then they do it again. They find another piece that's big enough. They move the fence to 12, so they had to change it again. They cut the piece to 12 inches, move the fence again, cut it to 10 inches. Now now they have two pieces done. That took 10 steps. So now they're going to do the, let's say they're going to do the 11 by 10. So they go to the shelf. They find a piece that's big enough. They move the fence to 11 inches. They cut the 11 inches. They move the fence to 10 inches. They cut the 10 inches. Now they have their third piece done. We repeat for the fourth piece. And then now for the the last two pieces that are like six by seven they find some pieces of wood that are big enough they move the fence to seven move the fence uh, then cut it move the fence to six then cut it now piece five is done and they repeat blah, blah 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 now here we are that was 30 steps for them to be able to cut out all six pieces no notice for every single step what they did is they got their piece of wood they set the fence for one side cut it set the fence for the other side turn the board cut it they did that every single time. They did not do it strategically in terms of there's a common number. 10 is a common number. They could have set the fence once to 10, and let's say they could have cut, could have cut like four boards at the same time and got that 10 inches. But anyway, so let's, let's think about well, why is that a bad strategy. 
a couple different reasons. That could they could have an inconsistent size because they moved the fence so many times. Even though they had that 12 inches, was that twice, or let's let's say the 10 inches. They had the 10 inches four times. They could be slightly off a couple of those times, and they might have inconsistent size. The more steps you're doing, the more chances you have to mess up. So maybe you accidentally, if you're supposed to be setting it to uh, 10 and a half, maybe you accidentally set it to 10 and a quarter. The more chances, or the more times you're doing stuff, the more chances you have to mess up. Might uh, be wasting our own time. You know, if we're doing steps like this, we're definitely wasting our own time. We're probably wasting other people's time. And there's a good chance that we're wasting wood as well. If we're not finding an efficient way to cut this out like generally what we want to do is we want to cut a big long strip and then we're going to cut stuff out of that big long strip that's generally what we want to do so we're going to take a look at an example that shows a layout on how to cut out pieces so let's take a look at a better strategy for the same exact project so the scenario this time though is the person plans out their cuts same exact parts 12 by 10 11 by 10 7 by 10 same quantity but this time the person's gonna plan it out. Now notice this this here, this scenario, the bad scenario, had 30 steps. And then when we go to the good scenario, we're still getting the same amount of uh, parts, but we're doing it with only 16 steps. So let's zoom in here. Let's take a look at how do they actually plan this out. Let's orient ourselves on this piece of paper first. So this is a piece of paper that I will have available in the classroom for you. And you're gonna actually use in terms of helping you plan. It's a grid. What we're planning, this this grid is, we're planning, we're pretending, is a big piece of wood. We'll put our name on there. We'll title our project. We'll, we have some scale information here. We have some other basic information here. And so, again, what we're pretending here is that this big rectangle is like a big plank of wood. And then now you're going to have to choose, based on the sizes of your parts, what does it make sense for your scale? Does it make sense for each one of these squares to be one inch by one inch or does it make sense because if you're doing something bigger to make each one of these squares two inches by by two inches so and that's what i did for this example is it just was easier for me to pretend that each square represented two inches so if you notice here what i did is i looked at the parts here i tried to look at okay what's a common number between these well um, 12 is pretty close to 11. That's all pretty close, which is all pretty close to 10. But you know what? I have four pieces with the number 10. So, hmm, maybe there's a way that I could efficiently cut that. And that's exactly what I did. So my thought was, if you notice my mouse here, is I'll start, I'll measure, I'll put the fence on the, I'll do a rip cut on the table saw, set the fence to 10 inches, boom. So if you notice, here's my, my double. I'm pretending that each square represents two inches so i'm doing the double scale here and then here's my pink line my pink line is representing my first cut i do a rip cut right down the whole board also got my arrow showing that and that's going to leave me with kind of like a skinny strip that strip is going to be 10 inches wide and then now out of that one strip i can get every single piece and the reason why i know that is because I, so right here i'm showing that the length of my board is 72. Where in reality, the, this is actually um, 96 inches long. And again, the boards that most of you will be dealing with is, is like 12 by 36. And that's why we, we have this go up to 36. But for, it depends, kind of depends on your project. And this is just with the example that I'm showing here. I'm pretending I'm going to 72. So anyway, I'm cutting this whole thing 10 inches wide. And then now I can start like doing cross cuts, chopping out all these other pieces off of here. So piece one and two, if you notice, I'm again, I'm using double inches. So here's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. That's where my green line goes to. So this is a 12 by 10. This first piece here is 12 by 10. So I'm gonna um, plan that out and there's my zip. I do a cross cut there and then this piece is done. And what's really nice, is I'm gonna leave the table saw set, I would leave the table saw set to how it was before, so I do that same cut again, zip, and then now I have two pieces that are the same, 12 by 10, and then now here's my 12 by 11. Notice I had to do like halfway between there because I'm doing the double scale, so I'd go zip, and then there's my third piece, and I do zip, there's my fourth piece. So that's all pretty simple. Let's let's take a look at what that is looks like, just kind of explained here. 
So I'd get my big piece of wood, I'd set the fence to 10 inches, I'd cut down the whole board, zip, all the way down it. And then I'd set the fence to 12 inches, or do like a, a miter, use the miter gauge to do a cross cut. And then I'd cut out piece one, and then repeat the exact same process for piece two. Boom, done. And then I'd set the fence to 11, use my miter gauge, and I'd cut out piece three, and then I'd do the same thing with cross cut, set piece, uh, do the same thing for piece four. Now here's where strategy can get a little bit more um, complicated. I have those two pieces that are six inches, like six inches long or wide, whatever you want to say. So I'm going to cut those out both at the same time. I'm going to cut them kind of next to each other. I'll show you what I mean. So that's why I'm setting this to 12.5 and I'm adding a little bit extra because that blade has thickness. The blade has, is an eighth inch thick. So if you notice here, I'm setting my um, fence to 12.5. The reason why, because I'm going to get this and then I'm going to get this. So I go, I go, I do this cut and then that allows me to get play with that little chunk. So then I have this left over. All right, this is the parts that I'd be keeping. And then I have this nice board left over. And I made a mistake when I drew this, that this actually, this arrow should stop here. So that would leave this nice board for somebody else to use. So then I'm just dealing with this rectangle. So with this rectangle, then I'd set this, the fence to seven and I'd zip that off yep, right that way. And then here's just, this is probably gonna be garbage. And then I have one more cut yep, to cut those two apart. So that, again, that's just a way quicker way that allows me to uh, cut out my project and as I said, this was only like, it's like 16 steps or something to use this route. Yeah, so 16 versus 30. Way less time, way less chances of messing up, <clears throat> way less wasting wood when we use planning. And then here's something to think about, which I don't have drawn on here, but you gotta think about if you have like some other bigger pieces, is that if you're gonna do a rip cut all the way down the board, like you can't orient it so you rip right in the middle through the board so that's something you got to think about there so to wrap this lesson up planning your cuts totally required we'll have some documents like this in class you should be using multiple colors it's going to help you understand i may or may not have some information on the back there for you we want to rip cut when possible just because it's really nice and easy to set the fence up like that we can do some rip cuts and then for anything that's less than eight inches wide we want to do um we want to use the miter saw so just a heads up there that's because that frees up our tables thanks for participating in this lesson and make sure to let me know if you have questions